What's going on guys? This is Vodnalik Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 video and continuing with our Borderlands 2 Top 10 Weapon Type series. Today we'll be going over what I think are the 10 best pistols. Now, in line with all of our other videos in this series, we'll be including newly added gear from the Commander Lilith DLC, and our rankings are going to be weighted based on how powerful, how rare, and how useful or good a given pistol is. Typically, more powerful pistols will be given preference in the rankings, but rarity and difficulty in acquisition will also play a factor. Also, you may notice there is a pistol I'm using here that you may not recognize, and if you know what it's called, definitely be sure to let everyone know in the comments section below. Failing that, definitely be sure to smash like on this video to prevent fire drills and other really tense situations. One like equals increased happiness, so smash like to improve your overall mood. But enough intro, let's go ahead here and get into the video starting with our number 10 entry, which is going to be the Gub. While I feel it's lacking in some ways, the Gub is actually a pretty good corrosive only pistol, and at the very least, it's far better than the likes of the Dominator, Wanderlust, and really any other awful pistol that you can think of. What I would say makes the Gub good is its base damage, which is above average, and its magazine size, which is far above average. The average Gub has a magazine size of around 110 to 120, while some variants can hit the 180s, which is both ridiculous and kind of awesome at the same time. These two factors, when combined with some skills that boost fire rate, can actually allow you to achieve pretty good DPS. With this said, I think the Corrosive Elemental Exclusivity is a bit of a problem, since Corrosive Exclusivity is more limiting than Fire Exclusivity is. That, and for whatever reason, Borderlands 2 is just crowded with unique, corrosive-only pistols, and because of that, the Gub may be less useful if you already have a pretty good corrosive pistol. Even still, though, the Gub is definitely worth seeking out, and if you want one of these, you could farm one from Laney White, located in the fridge, after you've completed the Cold Shoulder side quest. Number 9. The Hornet and the Hector's Paradise so, the Hornet is a returning pistol from Borderlands 1, while the Hector's Paradise is a totally new pistol added with the Commander Lilith DLC. I decided to include both of these pistols together, simply for the fact that both are essentially the same thing. Both are burst-fired pistols that share the same weapon scan, both have fixed elements, and both benefit from grenade damage bonus. Even the stats between both of these weapons are the same, provided you can get variants that possess identical parts. The real difference between the two is that the Hornet is a corrosive pistol, while the Hector's Paradise is a shock pistol with a fixed blade accessory. For this reason, you may find the Hornet is a better weapon, simply because it can spawn with more accessories. However, the Hector's Paradise does have the advantage of being a shock weapon, and has the benefit of being far easier to get, simply being a quest reward as opposed to something you have to farm from a particular mini-boss. Of the two, I'd probably recommend the Hornet over the newly added Hector's Paradise, since Hornets can spawn with better accessories, but the Hector's Paradise is still pretty decent. If you want these, the Hornet can be farmed at the very beginning of the game by taking on Knuckle Dragger in Windshear Waste, while the Hector's Paradise is acquired by completing the Echoes of the Past side quest mission in the Commander Lilith DLC. Number 8, The Maggie. While Borderlands 2 didn't include the masher accessories present in the original game, Borderlands 2 does at least have the Maggie, which is very similar and in some ways is better due to how the Maggie maintains a very high fire rate when compared to legacy masher style revolvers. The fires as fast as you can pull the trigger nature of the Maggie allows the player to get a lot of shots off, which can make you feel like you're firing a wall of bullets at enemies. The only real issues I foresee anyone having with the Maggie come down to the increased projectile count and maybe its non-elemental status. The increased projectile count does make it difficult to land all 6 or 10 projectiles on a crit spot. Additionally, non-elemental weapons tend to be at a disadvantage at higher difficulties since they can't take advantage of elemental bonuses which provide a multiplicative damage boost. Aside from these aspects though, I think you'll find that the Maggie is a very competent Jacobs pistol, and if you want one, they drop from Mick Zafford, who is only encountered by siding with the Hodunks at the very end of the Clan Wars mission arc in the dust. Usually, I'd recommend siding with the Zaffords to farm the Hodunks for a Slaga, but the Maggie is still a good legendary and well worth farming for. Number 7, 
the Stinger, and Anarchist. The Vladov Anarchist, along with the Vladov Stinger, are Vladov pistols that sport the Vladov pistol barrel, which is typically known for its high fire rate and magazine size boost. Both of these factors together give the Anarchist good DPS when compared to other similar Vladov pistols, and for that reason, the Anarchist tends to be popular regardless of character. Though I will say Salvador players probably prefer Anarchist over a certain Vladov pistol we'll be discussing in our next entry, thanks to the fact that Anarchists can be regularly reloaded. The only real difference between the Stinger and the Anarchist from a functional standpoint is that the Stinger has bullets that can ricochet off of surfaces. Statistically, both the Stinger and Anarchist are the same provided they have identical parts, which may actually give the Anarchist a slight edge if you consider that Gemstone Anarchists will deal more damage on criticals. Then again, ricochet potential ensures you may not need to be quite as accurate, which could certainly be a boon for the Stinger. So really, I would just say, just use the weapon with the better parts. Overall, both of these pistols are great to have on any character and any build, and if you want them, Anarchists are either obtained from any suitable loot source, or if you want a gemstone variant, they are obtained from Butt Stallion in Flame Rock Refuge once the Dragon Keep DLC has been completed. If you want a stinger, it drops from the Dragons of Destruction raid boss that can be accessed from the Lair of Infinite Agony, which is also in the Dragon Keep DLC. Number 6. The Infinity. Though it has a tendency to be overrated by some of its biggest fans, I think we can all agree that the Infinity is a great pistol for what it is. Infinite ammo is useful on pretty much any character since most characters lack some way to regenerate ammo, and given that the Infinity is based off of the Vlad of Anarchist, you're getting pretty good fire rate here as well. Plus, you may find you like the unique fixed firing pattern on this gun, which can give your shots a lot more consistency while hip firing. As far as characters go, the Infinity is a popular choice on Zero thanks to its synergy with One Shot One Kill, extant players like the Infinity when it's paired with Gunner Comms, and you might even be able to get it to work on Anarchy Gauge with a true neutral comm. It's generally a popular choice for all six of the Vault Hunters, so you won't have to worry about not being able to use one of these things once you actually get it. The best variants of these are usually with the Vengeful prefix and Vladov parts, and if you want an Infinity, you can farm one from Doc Mercy during or after the Medical Mystery side quest that's located in Three Horns Valley. Alternatively, you can also encounter Doc Mercy during Digistruct Peak as well, so that's another way to receive an Infinity. Number 5. The Fibber if there was any one gun in Borderlands 2 where the phrase more than meets the eye is applicable, I think it's safe to say that the Fibber fits the bill. This is because the Fibber can come in three different variants that have three different barrels. The first Fibber barrel is known as the Shotgun Fibber, and as the name implies, it fires a volley of slow-moving projectiles. The best way to tell that you have this version is that it has a projectile multiplier of 1, and as you might guess, this version of the weapon is often considered to be the worst variant and should be avoided. The second Fibber Barrel is known as the Crit Fibber. This version of the Fibber is characterized by extremely low damage and extraordinarily high critical hit bonus, and you'll know that you have this version if the projectiles look like orbs and have a slight arc to them when you fire. The Crit Fibber is a pretty good weapon, but it comes in second place to the final Fibber Barrel, which is going to be shown in this video, and is known as the Ricochet Fibber. What's special about this version is that the initial projectile can ricochet off of surfaces, and then result in considerably more projectiles. This property makes the Ricochet Fibber the best variant as it not only goes well with the B, but it also goes well with gauges close enough and anarchy. In fact, both of these skills can make the Fibber an incredibly powerful weapon on Gage, so if you do play Gage, it might be worth your time to get your hands on a Ricochet Fibber. Again, the Ricochet Fibber is generally considered to be the best, but regardless of what variant you get, you can obtain Fibbers by completing the A Real Boy line of side quests that are located in the Iridium Blight. So be sure to help Mal if you want one of these. Number 4. The Lady Fist. While it's unfortunately acquired later on in Borderlands 2's campaign, there's no denying that the Lady Fist is one of the most useful pistols you can get your hands on. This is mainly thanks to its inherent crit bonus, which is far above average when compared to most other weapons. So much so that the base damage on the Lady Fist has been lowered to compensate for this in order to just make the weapon more balanced. 
What makes the Lady Fist desirable though is that its critical hit bonus is passive. The Lady Fist can be used to increase the critical hit damage of other weapons, whether they be snipers, shotguns, or whatever else you can think of. Typically, it's easiest to take advantage of this effect on Salvador, since he can dual wield two different weapons at the same time, however other characters can take advantage of the passive crit boosts on weapons with slower projectiles. So for example, the Lady Fist would actually go pretty well with the Twister shotgun. As said, the Lady Fist is acquired in the late game, which kinda sucks, but if you're in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode and playing a Salvador in particular, I would say it's an essential piece of equipment. If you want one, simply complete the Uncle Teddy side quest and make sure you turn in the schematics to Unabaha. Number 3. The Grog Nozzle So like the Lady Fist, the Grog Nozzle is a fantastic utility pistol that's mainly used for passive effects rather than conventional damage output. Then again, between the slag element and the insanely low base damage on this thing, you probably wouldn't want to use the Grog Nozzle as your primary weapon, even with its complement of amazing passive effects. More specifically, the Grog is the most powerful moxie weapon in terms of healing, providing the player with an astonishing 65% healing based on damage dealt. This makes the Grog the best moxie weapon for quick healing, and when you factor in the Grog's decent crit boosting abilities and its potential to randomly cause the player to get drunk, which ends up increasing the projectile count while decreasing fire rate, I think it's safe to say that the Grog is extremely useful. Character wise, the Grog is great on pretty much everyone. Most characters will really only be able to take advantage of the healing while throwing a grenade, but Salvador can get Zerk with the Grog and really benefit from all of the special effects. So it's probably best on him, but it's still really good on everyone else. All one has to do to get a Grog is simply start the side quest in the Dragon Keep DLC called The Beard Makes the Man, and then just simply never complete it. As long as you're the host within your specific game, you can then use the Grog Nozzle to your heart's content. Number 2. The Gunnerang As far as TDR weapons go, the Gunnerang in my mind is up there with the likes of the Avenger and Baby Maker in that it's a very powerful weapon for TDR reloads. A lot of this is thanks to the fact that the Gunnerang has decent base damage, but mainly revolves around the fact that it possesses a decent magazine size. And to give you some idea, the Gunnerang can usually have a capacity around 30 to 40, with truly exceptional variants having capacities in the 50s. The only real downside is that the Gunnerang is lacking in encounters up against a multitude of enemies and can be somewhat unpredictable. This is because the Gunnerang's reload isn't conventional, as it seeks out enemies upon being thrown, so it's possible to throw a Gunnerang and not even hit the enemy that you intended. For that reason, the Gunnerang is usually better in one-on-one -on -one fights with the boss, mini-boss, or raid boss, and I'd recommend using it in those kinds of scenarios. Character-wise, the Gunnerang is a great choice for TD or accident builds, and you might even be able to get it to work on Krieg as well. However, I think you'll find Axton is more practical, since he strikes a better balance between boosting magazine size and overall reload damage, where you may find Krieg boosts magazine size too much, allowing for only 4 or 5 reloads or so. If you're interested in the Gunnerang and you want to farm one, they're normally acquired from Rackman in the fridge, Rackman's area can be accessed once you've completed the Cold Shoulder side quest where you defeat Laney White for Scooter. So while you're farming for a Gub, you can also farm for a Gunnerang. And for our final entry, number 1, The Devastator. Wait, I think we got the wrong Torque Pistol here. Let's try that again. Number 1, The Unkempt Herald. I doubt anyone is really all that surprised this is number one, and I guess if you are, well, be sure to smash like on this video and leave a comment letting me know in the comments section below what you think of Borderlands 2. But anyway, the Unkem Herald and its double penetrating variant are the most powerful pistols in Borderlands 2. This is thanks to how the standard variant fires an additional 7 unlisted projectiles in a relatively tight horizontal spread. This allows you to deal potentially 7 times the amount of damage that's listed, which is pretty impressive. The double penetrating variant on the other hand fires 14 projectiles, which yields even better damage output. Because of all of this, the Herald ends up being a great weapon across all characters. Double penetrating or more simply deeper variants tend to be especially powerful and viable on pretty much everyone.
In fact, you don't even really need to have a character like Axton or Krieg to boost the explosive damage here, as Unkept Heralds will prove effective on the likes of Zero and Maya. Granted, building around the Herald is a good idea, but if you're in a pinch and you need something that's just going to hit like a truck, I think you'll find that the Herald fits that bill. If you want an Unkept Herald, you can acquire one by farming an NPC named Savage Lee that's located in Three Horns Divide. However, the more practical option would be to purchase an Unkempt Herald from one of the Torg vending machines in the Torg DLC. By purchasing, you can ensure that you get an Unkempt Herald with the right parts and the right prefix. Alright guys, thank you all for watching, and I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to smash like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next Borderlands 2 video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.